Hello again, this is David Coyle, and thank you for joining me again for Real Life Worth Living. James chapter 5 is where we are. We're picking up in verse 7 and uh, looking into more of the ideas that James has been told to put forth in order to instruct us in the Christian life and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and how we can live consistently in the face of trial. That's what James is primarily dealing with here in this book, the idea of trial, of persecution, because of our faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, it is no less evident anywhere in the first century in the New Testament than it is here in the book of James. And yet James is dealing with it specifically, um, using that as the premise for his argument all the way through the five chapters of this book, and even showing us that there are those who are coming into the church, into the gathering place of the church, uh, where Christians are supposed to be seeking to be with their own to learn of God and learn from God, learn of his word, and yet there are others who are obviously coming in demanding uh, great positions and uh, great uh, places of honor, and so God is dealing with them. Now he tells us here in verse 7, he tells the Christians to be patient. Therefore, based upon the fact that the world is always going to be the world and the faithless are always going to be the faithless and the unsaved are always going to be the unsaved and there's always going to be this persecution of believers by unbelievers, this uh, lack of recognition of worth and value of believers by unbelievers, it's always going to be that way until... God has finally saved the last person on earth and has taken us into his presence. And that's what we get to talk about a little bit this time, one of my very favorite subjects, the eschatological ramifications of the new covenant. In other words, we get to talk about uh, future events a little bit. Because in verse 7, he says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. When will all of this be set straight? At the coming of the Lord for his church. When will all of this finally be made fair? At the coming of the Lord for his church. We will not always have to go through all of the affliction and persecution that this world is going to see who are alive now and on the earth now. In James's time, they looked very much toward the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, just as we do. They would have recognized him physically as he came back, and, and they fully expected that at any moment he would return. And that is why in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 5, uh, there is such a controversy over this whole issue. There were those who said that it's already happened. And Paul had to write in order to, uh, to uh, comfort them that, the, that it hadn't already happened. It's still future. And uh, it is still future today in our day, and it is not very far off. Now, why do I say that? Because uh, not knowing when it will take place, not being able to ever know when it will take place until it does, I can say this, we're 2,000 years closer than we were in Paul's and James's day. And if it was imminent then, it's really imminent now. And if uh, they were looking for it breathlessly then, we should be doing no less today. Now, he says that God is going to set all this straight, 
that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to set all of this straight at the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it and, until, until he receive the early and the latter rain. It's a matter of timing. He tells us here that the husbandman, the farmer, the vine dresser, the field tender, the Lord God, Jesus tells us in uh, 2 Timothy that God the Father is the husbandman. And he is waiting for the very last fruit to become ripened for the harvest, to gather it in. The very last fruit in this context is the very last person who will ever be saved before the Lord Jesus Christ is sent to, to the clouds to call his children, his, his followers, into his presence, into his arms, and into his heavenly abode. And in verse 8, Be also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. I love those words because it tells me that our rescue from this life of trial, of persecution, of pain, of sickness, of torment is about finished. This is the only place where there's evil and we will be rescued from the presence of evil. This is the only place where we live in a corrupted body and we're about to be rescued from a corrupted body and given an incorruptible body. Revelation 3.10 tells us that because we are believers and we have kept the word of his patience, his word while he's gone, that he will also keep us out of the hour of temptation, testing, which is about to come upon the whole inhabited earth to try the souls of them that dwell upon the earth. Now, that's a little enhanced from the Greek New Testament, but I hope you'll forgive me that point. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, and 18. Can you see now why that is one of my very favorite subjects of the New Testament? That spells out our freedom, our true liberty, that wonderful, blessed time when we're going to stand face to face in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ from then on and forever. Corruption will take on incorruption. Now, I want you to listen to these verses. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also resurrection of the dead, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. First Corinthians 15, 20-23 Our Lord has promised us an escape from all trial. He has provided it through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. More again next time.